Assalamu alaikum dear students. I hope you are doing well. This is Ehsan Ashfaq, your instructor for this short course of Microsoft Excel. Let me first brief you about this introductory course. This course of Microsoft Excel is specially designed for beginners and I will try to cover all the basics of Microsoft Excel that can serve as the first step towards advanced Excel features. Now let's move towards the contents of this short course. First of all, I will introduce you with Microsoft Excel's interface. Then we will be talking about how we can use different formulas in Microsoft Excel. Some important Excel functions would be discussed then. After that, we would be talking about text-based functions with examples. Then we will be discussing about the use of function keys in Microsoft Excel. Uh, after that, we will discuss different date-related functions. After that, I will show you that how we can apply data validations to our cells in Microsoft Excel. This will be followed by conditional execution in Microsoft Excel, in which we will use different if and nested if conditions. After that, I will show you that how we can consolidate data from multiple sheets in Microsoft Excel. Then we will see how we can create customized list as per our requirements. Graphs are a very important tool of Microsoft Excel. They will also be discussed. I'll show you how you can insert headers and footers in your Microsoft Excel worksheets. And at the end, we will be talking about some advanced Excel uh, functions to show you and to let you know how advanced features can be embedded in Microsoft Excel. So let's start with the show. Okay, students, so as discussed earlier, we will be first talking about the interface of Microsoft Excel. Let me first tell you that as this is a very basic introductory course, so I have used the basic version of Microsoft Excel. So just to make sure that it's easy for the students to follow the instructions. So as far as the interface is concerned, the good thing about these Microsoft tools is that their interface is quite consistent across all their tools. You need to remember a few things before talking about the interface. Whenever we open Microsoft Excel, it basically opens up a workbook for us. Just like Microsoft Word, whenever a Microsoft Word is open, so it opens a document for us and a document may contain multiple pages. So similarly over here in Microsoft Excel, a workbook is open and a workbook contains multiple sheets. As you can see down here, we have by default three sheets in this workbook. Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. These are sheet tabs. We can move across these sheets and we can add or delete the number of sheets according to our requirement. Secondly, whenever you save a workbook, remember that the file extension of Microsoft Excel is .xlsx, okay? So now let's talk about the interface of Microsoft Excel. Right at the top, we have the title bar, which contains the title of the workbook. By default, right now we have book one. On the left of the title bar, we have this quick access toolbar, and on the right, we have these windows control. Then we have different tabs like home, insert, page layout, formulas, then we have different tabs and under these tabs we have the corresponding ribbon. This complete area is called the ribbon. Now each ribbon has different groups, they are called ribbon groups. For example, if you are in the home tab, so you have different groups like clipboard, font, alignment, number, style, cells and editing. Inside each group we have different features that are offered by the Microsoft Excel. Then below the ribbon, we have this name box and this name box basically show us the currently active cell or a range of cell. For example, if I have currently active cell is B2, so you can see B2 is written over here. I'll talk about cells, rows and columns in a while. Then we have this formula bar, but before the showing you the use of formula bar, let me talk about this work area in Microsoft Excel. The work area of Microsoft Excel is basically presented in a tabular form. It contains multiple rows. As you can see, these one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, these are the rows. Then we have A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on, these are the columns. And at the intersection of each row and column, we have the cell. And whatever we do, whatever formula we 
place we actually deal with it in the cell right remember that we have 10 lakh 48 thousand 576 rows in microsoft excel worksheet similarly we have 10384 columns in a single worksheet right so whenever we are pasting any formula we will be doing it within a cell now let's talk about this excel formula as i just mentioned that whenever we will be using any formula so we will be inserting it in a cell but that formula bar is basically the bar that is used to deal with this formulas whichever formula you write your formula can be seen in the formula bar and you can directly edit that in the formula bar as well remember that excel formula basically enables you to perform different operations on your numeric and textual data it is an expression that operates on a cell or a complete range of cell. When a formula is applied on an active cell or a range of cell, it can be seen in the formula bar right here. And one more thing that you need to remember that any Excel formula must begin with an equal symbol at the start. For example, if you are going to use some formula in cell A1, so first of all, you need to write this equal symbol and only then you can insert the formulas. Right now, I have not talked about the formula, but you have different functions in Microsoft Excel. As you can see, uh, all the functions starting from S are given in this drop down list and different functions can be used in this formula, right? Then you have this, uh, as far as the interface is concerned, you have this scroll bar, right? This is vertical scroll bar. This is basically horizontal scroll bar. These are the sheet tabs and you can insert any number of sheets or you can delete sheets as per your requirement. We can also rename sheets. For example, right click on the sheet tab and you can see a rename. You can rename it, for example, let me rename for example omt press enter and you can see that omt has been inserted as a name for the sheet one right and then you have these uh, uh, zoom in and zoom out features you have different views so these are the important things about the microsoft excel interface now we will be talking about other features of microsoft excel interface in which this interface would be used thank you In the previous video, we talked about different formulas and functions. A single formula can have multiple functions inside it. I also mentioned that before using any formula, we must use an equality symbol. This actually lets Excel know that it can expect a formula to follow. Now we are going to discuss different important functions. These are basic functions, but important for you to understand before going ahead. We will be discussing some function average function count and count a there is a slight difference i'll be demonstrating that then we'll be talking about the sum if function count if function match function we look up function and then we can also see that how we can create drop down list now i have made another sheet now let's deal with it using a scenario so let's suppose we have a daily sale of our shop in this worksheet named omt the items are given in the order of their sale and corresponding prices we were we first want to obtain the total sale, average sale and count of our daily item sale. Then we want to apply this by using a criteria and obtain the sale and count of a particular object or a particular item that we have sold. So now let me show you how we can do that. So click on the cell in which you want to insert the formula, write the equal symbol, press S and you will see that the list of all the formulas that start from S appear on your screen. You can search for the sum function or you can simply write SUM then double click on the sum function from this list. Now it asks you for the list of parameters. So you can select this entire list just click on the first cell and then drag it to the end of the range and you can see b2 colon b9 is written as a parameter with some function colon is basically used to show the range b2 colon b9 means that the complete range from b2 to b9 is selected and the sum function would now be applied on it so just simply close it or you can close it or you can straight away press the enter button and then you will see that the sum appears over here similarly if you want to apply the average function so 
in, uh, insert the equal symbol then a v e so you can select the average uh, formula from this list click on average give it the complete range of cell in which you want to apply the average function press enter and here we go the average sale of item is 65 similarly if you want to obtain the count of a um, uh, total count of the items that are sold so for that we have the count uh, function available so equal symbol cou you can see from this list you can select count and then just uh, select this entire range and press enter so you will see a total of eight items were sold together from uh, sold today from our shop right now similarly if we want to do this all calculation on the base of a criteria by criteria i mean i do not want to obtain the sale of the entire item rather than i want to focus on a particular item so for that we first have to create a drop down list of items right so let me first show you how do we create that drop down list click on the cell in which you want to apply the drop down list and uh, you need to go to the uh, data then press on data validation you will see when you are doing that so by default any value would be selected from this uh, drop down list you need to go to the list right first of all i will clear all the predefined functions so select list from here and then from the source you can uh, you can insert these items manually as well but right now i have this list uh, over here so i can select this list and it will be inserted as a reference in the source right so click on ok and you will see that the drop down list has been created now you can select any item from this drop down list now for example if i want to obtain the sale of a particular item right now for example if i have selected pin pen so i have i want the sale of pen so equal symbol and is now as it is a criteria based sum it is not a normal sum so whenever you want to obtain the criteria based sum you need to use the sum if function okay sum if function would not return the sum of all the items rather than it will return you with only the particular uh, the sum of a particular item that you have selected from the drop down list so click on sum uh, click on the cell press equal symbol then write sum if and uh, you will see that we have three different criteria of sum if function first of all it demands us the complete range so in the com in the first parameter range you have to s select this entire table as you can see from a1 to b9 then press comma then select the criteria as the criteria is present in this drop down list so just click on this drop down list whichever item is selected in the drop down list that becomes a criteria for your sum if function then comma and then in the last parameter it demands you with the sum range so this is your sum range give this entire sum range to it as a third parameter and press enter so you can see that uh, total sale of pen is 150 for example you, you can confirm it from here you can see pen was one sold for 100 and another pen was sold for 50 so the total sale is 150 now you can select any other item the total sale of razor was 120 the total sale of soap was 100 and the total sale of cola is 150 so as the parameter is changing the sum if function is giving you a different formula uh, sorry a different value because it is based upon the currently selected parameter that we have given as a uh, uh, as an input to that function right so similarly we can have a count of items uh, i mean if we want to see that how many colas were sold today so you can use the count if function the simple count function basically counts the entire range right but the count if function particularly focus on a criteria which we have given in the drop down list so press equal symbol and use the count if function now count if function it requires only two parameters so the first of all you have to give it the range so again you can uh, like select this entire table or basically you can only select this column because the uh, labels or the items are present in this column so you can only select this column and then press comma and then select the criteria so 
criteria would not change the criteria would still be that item that is selected in the drop down list so click on that item and press enter so a total of three colas were sold today you can confirm it from this original data first second and third similarly when you change an item from the drop down list its corresponding sale and the count of items that were sold related to that particular item would also change so this is how you can use the some average count sum if and count if function okay students let's move ahead to uh, other important functions like vlookup and match function but before doing that let me add something to the drop down list creation uh, functionality of microsoft excel in the previous part of this video i show you how you can create a drop down list from a given list which was already present in our excel sheet we can do it uh, manually and we can insert the uh, items of the drop down list manually as well for example if i want to create a drop down list of cities as you can see there is no predefined list given over here in this excel sheet so uh, let me show you how we can insert these values manually you need to go to the data tab in data tab um, you have the data tools group from the data tools group click on data validation and uh, as uh, shown previously by default you would have any value selected in the allow drop down list click on this drop down list and select list now previously we selected the entire list from the worksheet but right now we would enter the values manually so for example uh, i can insert i can write peshawar and then insert a comma a comma means that we are going to write the next value so peshawar islamabad comma karachi comma lahore right and in this way you can insert values manually now click on the ok button and you will see that the a drop down list of all the items that we inserted manually has been created so this was a revision of uh, creating drop down list and i also showed you how you can create this manually now let's move ahead to the vlookup and uh, match function now for example uh, we have the list of items that we normally sold in our shop uh and uh, then we have its corresponding prices so we assume that the prices are fixed so uh, for example if i want to uh, have a feature in my microsoft excel worksheet that whenever an item is selected its corresponding price should be shown to me right so you can see that the in the in the given list the caption or the labels of item are given on the left hand side and its corresponding prices are given on the right hand side in this way now we can apply the we look up function right so first of all in this uh, we have to create the drop down list now you already know that how can we create the drop down list so go to the data tab and from the data tab click on data validation then click on select uh, then select list from this drop down list and in the source as we already have this list so there is no need to manually insert these values so just select this list and press on okay so you can see that the list of items that are normally sold in our shop are is now available to you in the form of a drop down list now we want to see the price of any item uh, which is given on the right hand side on in on the uh, rightmost column in the data given above so we can insert the we lookup function press equal symbol v l o and you can see we lookup function is uh, here so just double click on it now it requires you multiple parameters you need to understand it first of all it asks you which value you are looking for so the value uh, that is same uh, to selecting the criteria in the sum if and count if function so the lookup value is present in the drop down list so you can select this as a criteria of lookup value press comma then you give it need to give it the complete table array so this is our complete table array select this entire table then column index number you can see that in the table we have two columns and we we are looking for a value that is present in the second column you can see item is the first column and price is the second column so you're looking for a value that is present in the second column so the column index number would be 2 right and then you have last parameter as a range lookup and from that you need to select this first one true right so that's it these are the uh, parameters that are required for the we lookup function press enter and you can see that the corresponding price of pen has appeared so you can change the uh, item from the drop down list 
the price of soap is 200 the corresponding price of a razor and the corresponding price of pen right now a position function uh, if we are interested in knowing the position of an item in a given list for example the soap is present in position 2 uh, in the list of items so you can use match function for that so is equal to match it's very easy uh, you need to give it the lookup value that is the criteria so criteria is present in the drop down list just select this one then you need to give it the lookup array in which lookup array is basically the list in which the position would be searched for that particular item so we can select this list uh, cola soap eraser and pen and then match type so again you need to select the exact match over here and press ok so you can see that the pen is present at position 4 eraser is present at position 3 soap is present at position 2 and cola is present at position 1 right now uh, let's talk about the difference between count and count a function we have already used count function previously I've, I have this list of items and uh, there are total 1 2 3 4 5 6 entries 2 3 4 a 4 6 right now let me first apply the count function on it so is equal to count and then select this entire range and press enter you can see although there were six items over there but it returns us with a five so basically it is not counting this one the count function can only count the uh, uh, only those cell it considers only those cell which contains numeric entries but on the other hand if we use the count a function c o u n t a count a function and give it the same list so you will see it returns six so you need to remember this difference that count function only considers the numerical entries while count a function considers the numerical as well as the textual entries or if uh, any alphabet is inserted so it would also be considered by the count a function so this is the difference between count and count a. Welcome students to the next video of this short course of Microsoft Excel. In this video tutorial, I'll show you that how you can effectively use your function keys from F1 to F12 in Microsoft Excel, right? I have written the description as you can see on your screen, but now I'll demonstrate the use of each function key and show you how effective they can be while you are working and using Microsoft Excel. First of all, we have the F1 key. F1 key, when I press F1 key in Microsoft Excel, so it basically, it is used to open up the help window. You can get any type of help regarding any feature of Excel from this window, right? Let me click on F1 and you'll see that this window is now open. Let's take an example that, for example, if you are confused about how to use some function in MS Excel, so what you can do, you can just write some over here and then click on search, right? It will open different re articles relating to your query. For example, I want the details about the basic sum function. So here you can see in the first article, if I click on it, uh, it shows me that all the necessary details of the sum function, how I can use this function, the number of parameters required. It also gives me an example, as you can see on this uh, relating to the sum function that can be directly applied to your Microsoft Excel worksheet. And let me tell you that in the latest version of Microsoft Excel, it also shows you a short video of how you can use the uh, use any function which you have tried to search in using the F1 help window, uh, help window, right? Now, uh, similarly, F2 function, F2 function lets you enter the edit mode of a cell without using mouse. For example, if I write, uh, let's suppose I write Pakistan over here, I'm not using my mouse, I'm using to, I'm using arrow keys to move right and left, up and down in my Microsoft Excel worksheet. If I come to this cell G3 and if I want to edit it, I can simply press F2 and here you can see the cell has converted to edit mode and now I can write anything in this cell and the cell would be edited. So F2 is basically used to convert the active cell into edit mode. 
Then we have uh, the third function key F3, which is basically uh, used for pasting name formula. What does it mean? For example, you have a cell over here which contains the total marks and you have uh, you can rename this cell to any other name by default you can see that when this cell is selected in the name box g3 appears g3 g is basically the corresponding column of the cell and 3 is basically the corresponding row of this cell right so you can rename this cell and you can simply select this cell come to the name box and give it any name for example total <coughs> marks remember space is not allowed in uh, naming the uh, cells with another name right press enter now if you select any other cell you will see that it named appear which actually shows the corresponding row and column but if you select this cell now you will see that in the uh, name box that it's named which you already uh, gave to it is appearing in the name box right now for example if you are working at some other area in some other cell of your ms excel worksheet and you require that value for example i am in cell g16 and i require that value so i can directly refer to that value by its name how i can do that for example if i need to uh, subtract 200 from the total marks and if the total marks are not visible to me although they are visible right now but in case if they are not visible to me i can simply press the f3 key and you will see that it will show me the list of all the named cell or ranges i can simply select that from uh, this list press on ok and then write let's suppose uh, minus 500 or minus 200 and you can see that it gives me the answer so if you want to refer to any named cell or any named range in your formula you can use press uh, you can use f3 and it will show you a list of all the named cell or ranges and then you can uh, refer to that using the uh, using uh, by just selecting that from the list right then f4 is used to perform a redo operation and freezing operation i'll demonstrate both of them uh, first of all let me show you how we can do the or we can how we can perform the redo operation for example if i have selected uh, this cell and i have uh, turned it bold and i want to redo this operation on this cell now so i need not to go to the ribbon and then select b again i can simply press f4 and you can see that the action has uh, been reperformed. so that is redo what do you mean by freezing uh, let me uh, i'll explain the concept of freezing in the next video right now let's talk to the basics of function keys i'll definitely explain freezing in the upcoming video uh, f5 shortcut key is basically used to jump to another cell for example if i click f5 uh, you can see i can go to any named cell for example if i uh, click on this one and press ok it will take me to that range cell named cell or if i want to jump to any other cell for example let me press f5 again and in the reference i write for example m99 so you can see it will take me to the m99 cell here you can see the currently active cell is now m99 okay i can go back to my first cell using the f5 function key press f5 and write a1 so it will take you back to the a1 function key right f6 is used to basically uh, shift between pans we have multiple pans uh, uh, let me show you how we can use pen uh, for example if i'm not using mouse and i'm using my arrow keys to move right left up and down so you can see right now i'm in this working area but now if i press f6 key so now my pen has shifted and if you can focus on the zoom bar and the views so when I am using the arrow keys, I am basically moving between the different options present at the zoom bar because I now my current active pan is this one. If I press F6 again, so you will see that now I am moving between different tabs. So my pan has changed. Okay. And then if you press F6 again, so you are back to your original uh, working area. So by pressing F6, you can shift from one pan to another pan, right? Then you have F7 that is basically used for spelling and grammar check. Right now as there are no um, mistakes, so I don't think, uh, okay, we have got uh, this window. This is spelling and grammar check window. So using F7 key, you can open up the spell and grammar check window, right? F8 is used for extending the selection. For example, uh, 
uh, if I have selected this cell and without using mouse, I want to drag it to a complete range. So simply press F8 and now you can use arrow keys to extend the selection left, right, up or down. Press the escape key to release it and you will be back to your normal mode. Okay, so F8 is basically used for extending the selection. F9 is basically used for um, uh, calculating or updating the sheet. Uh, let me show you how. For example, if I write a few values over here and I find its sum. Here we go. And now I change some value. For example, this 2 is changed to 4. So the sum is also supposed to be changed to 11. But as you can see that the sum has not changed. First of all, let me show you the reason why it has not changed. So you can confirm it by going to the this menu and uh, file menu and clicking on Excel option. And when you click on apps Excel option, you can select formula. And from formula, you can see there are calculation option. And by default, if it is set to manual, so your values would not automatically be updated. If it is set to automatic, then you your values would automatically get updated if you change the source. So right now, if as it is selected to manual, so that is the reason why the eleven has not be, uh, nine has not been updated to eleven. So if it is the case and your workbook calculation is set to manual, and you want to update all the values to the uh, recent changes so you need to press f9 key. so here it is after pressing the f9 key the values are updated now and i would like to repeat that if your workbook calculation is set to automatic there would be no need of pressing the f9 key to update the values the automatically uh, your values would get updated as soon as any change in the source is made right then we have the f10 shortcut key f10 is used to activate menus basically you would be using keyboard to activate menus and to use different options present in the ribbon then we have f11 shortcut key that is for creating chart directly i would be discussing it in detail when in the upcoming lectures and then f12 key is used for save as operation so if you have updated your sheet or if you want to uh, save your sheet with a different name or with a, on a different location so you press f12 from the keyboard and it would open the save as dialog box right Welcome dear students to the next video of this short course of MS Excel. In the previous lecture when I was talking about the use of different function keys, one of the function key that was discussed was F4. And I told you that F4 function key is used for two different purposes. The first purpose was to re-perform an operation which you have recently performed. And the other to freeze the reference of a cell. I mentioned at that time that in the upcoming lecture I will be teaching you the concept of freezing. So the objective of this short video is to explain you how you can freeze your cell references and what does it mean. But first of all let me show you a very simple example to obtain some of three corresponding values. You can see I have three columns number one number two and the sum. If I want to obtain the sum of the two and three I can use the function as described earlier. We have some function for that. And then we can select these values so we obtain the sum as 5 now if I want to perform the same operation I mean I also want to find out the sum of the remaining two corresponding values so I need not to rewrite this function rather than I can simply drag the function and the same function would be applied on the upcoming range as well for example let me drag it here we go so you saw that I did not reapply that function rather than the function was originally applied at the cell C4. You can see in the formula bar the original function was sum of A4 and B4. But when I drag that into the next cell, so it the, the references of the cell was automatically updated. You can see in the formula bar that uh, in this one, I mean in cell C5, we are getting the sum of A5 and B5. So originally we wanted to obtain the sum of A4 and B4. So what has actually happened, the references have been updated. So similarly, uh, let me tell you A5 and B5 are the references, okay? The corresponding row and the corresponding column of a cell is basically referred to as its reference. Similarly, in the next cell, C6, we see that we are getting the sum of A6 and B6. So when I drag that cell, the references of the cell were automatically updated. 
Now, in some cases, you do not want the reference to get updated. And in that case, you have to freeze that reference. Now, let me show you another example that how do we do that. So let me copy this data and paste over here. For example, now, let me delete these values. Now, for example, you want to obtain the sum over here, but the sum is quite different now because in column number one, you have only one value that is two. And in column number two, you have three values. So what you want that the only value that is present at column number one to get added with all three values of column number two. So if we do it in the normal way, as we did earlier, that if we write sum and select these two references, and if I drag it now, so you will see that references would get updated and I'm getting the wrong result because originally the references were E4 and F4 and when I dragged it the reference were updated to E5, F5 and then the reference was updated to E6, F6. What I actually want now is that I want the second reference, I mean this one, the values of the column F to get updated but I do not want the reference of the column E to get updated. So basically when in cell G4 I am obtaining the sum of E4 and F4 and when I am dragging this to uh, G5 and G6 so what I want that the reference of the column number one that is the column E shall be freezed while column F references should get updated now because why if you remember I told you earlier that I want the only value to be added with all the values of column number two that only value is present at column number one so how do I do that let me now again write this function in the cell g4 is equal to sum now the first number the first number is this one now i want this number to get freezed i don't want this reference to get updated because this is the only value that i have in column e so what i am going to do i am going to press f4 and you will see that this reference would change you will see two additional dollar symbols with that one with the row and one with the column so let me press f4 here we go i have pressed f4 and now i am giving the second reference uh, these references are given as a parameter i do not want to freeze the second reference so i leave it as it is and press enter now when i drag this one and you will see i'll show you just a minute okay now let me drag it okay now you are getting the correct answer so this was the originally you, you could please focus on the formula bar this was the original formula sum of e4 and f4 but when i dragged it into the next cell g5 so you can see that only the second reference has gotten updated from f4 to f5 while the first reference e4 is same similarly in the next cell g6 you can see the first reference is freezed it's fixed while the second reference is updated so f4 key is used to freeze the reference of any cell and uh, i hope now it's clear that what does freezing means thank you Okay students, so next let's see some of the text-based Excel functions. As I told you earlier that MS Excel is not only about numbers manipulation, rather than we have several functions of MS Excel that are supposed to be used with textual data. So I will try to give you a few glimpses of those in some basic important text-based functions. Uh, I have some text written over here. I have written Pakistan is beautiful. So I have several functions, uh, for example, proper, upper, length, lower, left, right, mid, substitute, replace, find, and search. I'll show you how these functions can be applied on the text present in cell B2. So first of all, let us use the proper function. So what proper function does, it basically converts your text into proper case. By proper case, we mean that the first alphabet of each word is turned to capital. So how do we apply that equal symbol proper? Select the proper function and it requires only one argument and that is the text on which you want to apply that uh, that function. So select this cell B2 and press enter so you can see that the text has now converted to proper, uh, proper case, right? The first word of 
or in fact the first character of every word is now capital then we have the upper uh, function which converts your text to uppercase so it's easy uh, write the equal symbol then u double p uh, it will show you it will recommend you the upper function select this upper function select this text as parameter and press enter so you can see that it has now converted our text to the uppercase Similarly, uh, before using the length function, let me use the lower function. It's uh, again, uh, I hope you now understand that the lower function would convert our text into lower case. So equal symbol, uh, lower and uh, lower and select the text. And you will see that the entire text is converted into a uh, lower text, right? Lower case, sorry. Now uh, we have a function for calculating the length of the text. By length we mean the number of characters that are present in the text, in the selected text, right? So for that we have function uh, as a short form of the length. We have len, which is a short form of the length. Select this function, give it the parameter. Uh, which is actually the text present in b2 and press enter and you can see that there are 21 characters in pakistan is beautiful and remember that space is also counted as a character so if you count it you will see and you'll realize that there are 21 characters then we have a left function and now what does left function does by default it picks the leftmost character from the text i'll just show you how we do that is equal to left and it has two parameters the first one is mandatory the second one is optional so first of all we use this function only when what one parameter so let's select this text and you'll see it will return as p the leftmost character of this text is p so you can see p is returned similarly the right function by default returns us with the rightmost character of the text so uh, let us first use it right select the text and you will see that the final the last character which is the rightmost character l is returned but in some of the cases you would be requiring more than one leftmost character or more than one rightmost character so you can use a variation of left or right function uh, which basically basically requires to pass an additional optional parameter how it can be done for example if you need the three rightmost characters of the pakistan is beautiful so those three rightmost characters are basically p a k so how we can uh, modify this function uh, you just right left select the uh, text or select the cell in which your text is present and then write the second parameter which is basically the number of uh, characters that are required from the left side so if you write three so you can see that now it would return me three leftmost characters similarly if you want more than one rightmost character so you can modify this function in the same way use comma and then pass the uh, second parameter which is actually the number of rightmost characters required so for example if you required five rightmost characters so write five and then uh, you can close this function or you can directly press the enter button and you will see the five rightmost characters are now returned similarly if we want to uh, obtain uh, a string or a, a st some string from the mid of the text or for example we can say a substring of the text for example i require uh, let's suppose require this is right i s is now you uh, first of all you need to identify the position of i so p a k i s t a n and then space so we have nine characters before the i so i is present at the 10th position so let me show you how we can use the mid function is equal to mid mid now mid requires you three basic parameters first of all the text from which you need to pick up that substring so that text is present in cell b2 you select this then start number start number is basically the location of the character from where you want to start your substring so as i told you that i is at the 10th location uh, so uh, i write 10 and then how many characters do you require let's suppose i require two characters i s so write two and you will see that is is returned so i was basically the 10th um, uh, character uh, in, and remember that space is also counted as character right 
then we have the substitute function substitute function so a substitute function can be used to substitute a character with another character for example you can see in the text pakistan is beautiful a is being used i guess three times so if we want to replace or substitute a with another character let's suppose x so uh, how can we do that so it's equal to substitute use this function substitute then see it first of all requires you to enter the text okay so select the text here is our text then the old text by old text we mean that the character or set of characters that you want to replace so for example right now we want to replace a with another character so in the old text you need to select a and you need to write it in inverted quotes then the new text you want a to be replaced by x so in new text you need to write x and uh, if you want the first instance to be replaced first a to be replaced so then you can select one over here if you want the second a to be re uh, to be replaced by x so you can write two in the fourth parameter or if you want the third a to be replaced by a you can write three in the fourth parameter but as i want all the a's to be replaced by x so i will not use this fourth parameter it is an optional any parameter that is enclosed in square bracket is an optional one which, which means that you can ignore that one so as i want all the a's to be replaced by x so i will not use this fourth parameter and i'll simply close this function and you'll see that all three a's are now replaced with or substituted with x right so if for example let me show you how can we use this fourth parameter so if i want only the second a to be replaced by x and i want the first and third uh, a not to be affected so i can write two in the fourth parameter and you will see that only second a of pakistan is replaced by x right now uh, then we have another function that is the replace function replace function basically what it can do replace can replace a complete substring with another substring let me show you how we can do that so let me write replace replace has three parameters the old text which is basically the let's select this text this is the old text right then the start number start number means that how many basically you have to decide that from which character you want to replace something so for example i want to replace this tan with abc the tan of pakistan is supposed to be replaced by abc so what is the starting character t is basically the sixth character right p a k i s these are five characters t is the sixth character so the starting number is six and as i want to replace three characters so i'll say three and i want to replace it with a b c so i'll write uh, a b c over here and you will see that the t a n of pakistan would be replaced with a b c let me show you press enter and you can see that the t a n is being now replaced by uh, a b c uh, it's not necessary that if you are replacing three characters so they must be replaced by three characters you can and uh, for example let me edit this one and i want to replace t a n with only a b so it is only possible the number of characters need not to be same okay so if i press enter so you can see that the t a n is now replaced with a b right then we have find and search function the find and search function are basically used to find the location of a character in text there is a slight difference between them i'll demonstrate the difference uh, for example i want to find the location of k in this text so how can i do that is equal to find uh, find text like which text you want to find so i write uh, let's suppose k and then comma within text uh, like within text means that in which text you want to find it so i want to find it in this text give it this reference and uh, start number so i want to start searching from the start so as it is an optional parameter you can skip it right press enter so it show you that the location of the required character is 3 as it can be confirmed from the original text that k is present at third location right uh, now search function does the same uh, let me show you first is equal to search find text so as i want to find k 
within text so i want to find it within this text and i want to find from the start so there is no need of third parameter press enter so it gives you the same result but what is the difference then in uh, find and search let me modify the find function and instead of uppercase k i write the lowercase k here it is and i press enter no sorry uh, actually the original k was lowercase so let me write the uppercase this time and press enter and you see that it says that the value not found because find function is case sensitive it matches the case of the required character with the original text however if i do the same thing with search function so if i replace this lower cap k with the upper case k and press enter it still returns me with three so basically find and replace functions both are same functions the only difference between them is that find is case sensitive while search is not case sensitive it is independent of the cases so, so these were some important text based functions uh, and there are other functions but these are some basic function and the basic purpose was to show you that excel is not only meant for the manipulation of numeric data rather than you can also deal with the text based data thank you welcome dear students to the next video of this short course of microsoft excel uh, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can apply a different type of validation checks on your data. You need to remember that why do we apply validation checks? Because actually we want to make sure that invalid data is not entered in our cell, right? Because invalid data can completely uh, make our reporting and make our different type of analysis ineffective, right? So we need to make sure that only valid data is there in our Excel sheet. So uh, luckily Microsoft Excel is well aware of this thing and it has provided us with a set of features that can be used to apply data validation. And uh, first of all, you need to remember uh, the, uh, how we can use the data validation facilities. So inside the data tab, uh, you can see in the ribbon, we have data tools group and then we have the data validation facility over here. If you remember in the previous lecture, we have already used this data validation facility for creating the drop down list. So drop down list is also basically a type of validation check, which makes sure that a cell can only contain a value from a set of predefined values that we get as a list, right? So drop down list is there and we can only select one value from that. So uh, data validation, for example, if uh, someone asks you to enter your marks uh, in cell B2, and we want to make sure that uh, the minimum marks that can be entered is zero and the maximum marks that can be entered is 100 and no other mark value can be inserted in the cell B2. So how we can do that, you need to go to the data tab and then from the data tool, select data validation. You will see in the setting tab that by default, you allow any value in this cell. So anything can be entered. So you select this one and uh, as marks are normally whole number, it can be decimal number. The difference between decimal number and whole number is that decimal number can contain the fraction. So let's suppose uh, we select the decimal number. Now when we select the decimal number, we have different type of validation between, not between, equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. I'll show some of them. For example, right now in this scenario, I need the between check to be applied. So the minimum value that can be inserted is 1 and the maximum value that can be inserted is 100. Now press OK. And now you'll see that in cell B2, if I select 54, it accepts that. But if I select anything greater than 100, for example, 121, it says the value cannot be entered. It is not a valid value. Why it is saying that? Because I have already applied the validation check on it. I can retry entering some negative value. So let's suppose I enter minus 34. Again, it would not allow me because I have applied a check that the uh, values that can be entered in this cell must be between one and 100, right? So if I retry and enter 23, so it accepts that. Similarly, you can, for example, I want to apply a check on cell B3 that uh, it, uh, for example, cannot contain any value between 10 to 20, right? So uh, now go to the data tab and from data tools, you select data validation and this type you select, uh, let's suppose whole number and uh, fr from the type of data validation check, you may uh, select not between. So not between 10 and 20. 
so remember now this cell would allow any value except any value that is between 10 and 20 so no value in the range of 10 and 20 would be allowed and accept that any value would be allowed so let me show you press ok now you um, enter 100 it allows you enter 2 it allows but if you try to enter 15 it would not allow because you have set the data validation as no value between 10 and 20 may be allowed so you can enter any other value except in the given range right you can have uh, any other check so let me just show you the list of those checks uh, <clears throat> between not between equal to not equal to greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to so i strongly suggest you to go uh, through all of them right so this was uh, one type of check that can be applied we have already dealt with a list uh, we already now know that how do we create a list a drop down list creation has already been done if you're not that much familiar so you can go to the starting lectures and you can see how we have applied or how we have created the list in uh, Microsoft Excel using data validation tool right so let me show you another data validation uh, uh, tool for example I want to apply something on the text length some uh, I mean some criteria on the text length for example if uh, over here I am asked to enter the username and I want to make sure that username is at most five characters at most five characters right so what would I do? I'll go to the data validation and uh, from this list I'll select text length or and from this list I'll select uh, uh, less than or equal to and write here 5. So it would allow at most 5 characters. Now press enter. If I try to enter my name SN it accepts because uh, this is uh, the number of characters are equal to or less than 5. But if I try to enter Ashfaq so it would not allow this because uh, in Ashfaq there are a total of six characters so this is not allowed so that's how you can insert or you can apply check on the size of the text as well right so let me write SN over here uh, similarly let me show you another thing sometimes we want to uh, use or we uh, we are compelled to use some formula for applying data validation and uh, in the last lecture of this short course when I'll be talking about or when I'll be demonstrating you some advanced features of Microsoft Excel I'll demonstrate this feature as well that if you in in some situation the data validation can only be performed by using a complex formula containing different functions so in that case you are going to use this last uh, one that is custom and uh, in the while you click on the custom then you have the formula bar over here any formula can be written in that formula bar and that would be applied on the selected cell right then we have another uh, tab over here that is input message for example uh, let me first clear this selection uh, for example um, I want to give some information to the user regarding the validation check that have been applied on a given cell so for example I want that whenever user clicks on this cell so before writing or before in entering any data a message shall be given to the user that you can only input a maximum of five characters over here so let me first delete it uh, what I can do I can go to the data validation as you can see the data validation has already been applied so I can go to the input message uh, and uh, write over here some title be careful and then give the message the maximum number of characters that can be inserted are 5 and press ok now you'll see whenever someone clicks on this cell so it gets this message be careful the maximum number of characters that can be inserted are 5 okay so after the input message now let's further talk about some other important features that are presented in the data validation dialog box let me click on the data validation dialog box uh, then we have error alert so remember students we have three type of error alert when does an error alert come whenever we enter an invalid data into a cell that is not allowed as per the validation criteria of that cell so we get an error alert we have three type of error alert one is the stop the other one is warning the third one is information 
when you select the error alert as information it will give you information and then only after that it would allow you to enter any value like you will be informed about the error that you are making but nothing else than that right now when you, you select your error alert as warning so it will give you a warning and it will ask you that uh, as i have informed you about the error so do you still want to enter that invalid value and then it's up to you if you want to enter or if you want to insert the correct value and if you insert the third one as stop error alert so this will not allow you to enter this value the invalid value and in any way so for example right now uh, we have already applied a check on cell b6 that the maximum number of allowed characters are five so let me apply all these three different type of errors alert and let me show you how they behave differently so first of all let me apply the information so let me give it some title error uh, wrong insertion press ok so now if i am entering any value greater than uh, whose size is greater than 5 for example ashfaq i press enter it says a wrong insertion i press ok and that's it it does not compels me to change my value now if i set this as let me delete it and go to the data validation and set the error alert as warning and then press ok now when i enter the wrong value it says a wrong insertion and then it asks me do you still want to continue so if i say yes so it will let me enter these values i mean the value which contains more than five character and if i press no button then it would not allow me for example let me click on the no button and now it asks me to enter the correct value right so the final decision is on the user but if i set this error alert to stop now it would not allow me to enter the invalid value in any case so press ok and now enter ashfaq you will see it says wrong insertion and i have to retry i have to insert the correct value i do not have any other option so as i just mentioned uh, that uh, there are three different type of error alert if you uh, set the error alert to information so it will just give you the information and nothing else if you set the error alert to warning it will warn you and it will ask you if you still want to continue with that value that is uh, expected to be a wrong value and then it's up to you to take the decision and if you want to set the error alert as a stoppage as you it is right now uh, displayed on your screen so it would not allow you to enter wrong value in any case and you would be compelled to change it according to the acceptance criteria of welcome to the next short video of this introductory course to microsoft excel in this video i will demonstrate how we can perform conditional execution in microsoft excel conditional execution occurs when excel perform operations on the basis of some condition so in this context we are going to discuss three operators today and operator or operator and if operator first of all let's discuss the and operator and operator can take two or more conditions as parameter and if output of all the condition is true so the and operator will return true and even if the output of any one condition is false the and operator is going to return false over here the concept of true is presented by one and the concept of zero is presented uh, as false for example, uh, in this case, we have two inputs, x and y. And as we know that every variable may have two outputs in terms of true or false, as I earlier told you that uh, true is presented by one and false is presented by zero. So we can have four combination, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0. Now let me show you how we can apply the AND operation. So press the equal symbol and select the and operator now you can have any number of inputs right now we have only two inputs that is the x input and y input so select this one now what would be the output i told you that and operator returns true result if all the conditions are true over here true is presented by one and we know that in this combination x is zero and y is one 
So and operator is going to return me a zero or a false. Here you can see it gives me false. Similarly, I drag this to all the cells and you will see that only the third condition is giving me true in which both the X and Y are one and operator is returning me true. Otherwise, it is returning me false. Now, let's talk about the OR operator. OR returns true even if the one of the input condition is true. So let me show you how we can apply the OR operator is equal to OR and select X, Y input. And you see that as Y is one and X is zero, so it is returning true. So basically, if even if one of the given condition, which is given as a parameter is one or true or is going to return true. So in this scenario, in this truth table, or will only return one false and that is and that is in which X is zero as well as Y is zero. So let me drag this or operator to the complete range and you can see that only the last row or the last combination of value is false. Why? Because in this scenario, X and Y are both zero, right? So that is how we can apply the AND operator and OR operator. Now, let's talk about the IF statement. IF statement returns true if the condition is true. Otherwise, it returns false. Consider the given scenario as given in the table. We have student name and their corresponding marks. Now, we have to apply IF statements in such a way that if marks are less than or equal to 60, the student is failed. Otherwise, the student is passed. So let me show you how we can apply this function. So we have to apply this in the remarks cell. Okay. So equal symbol and then write if. Okay. Now look at that. We have three basic parameters in the if condition. First of all, we are going to give our logical test. Remember that this logical test is actually the condition that is to be tested. For example, in this scenario, we have to check if the marks are if the marks of the students are greater than or equal to 60. So or it depends upon the condition. So let me first test if marks which are actually present in cell I8. So if the marks present in I8 are greater than or equal to 60. Now, this is our condition and the condition is called logical test over here. If this is the case, then comma value if true. So what happens if this condition is true? So if this condition is true, it's written pass. So that is the first possibility that if the condition is true, so it will show us pass comma. What if the condition is false? If this condition is false, so it will show us fail. So here it is how you can apply the if statement. It has three parameters. I repeat the first one is the logical test, which is basically the condition to be tested. The second one is the value if the condition is true. And the third one is the value if the condition is false. So what we were doing here, we were actually trying to check the marks of the students with the condition, with the constraint that if the marks are greater than or equal to 60, you are pass. Otherwise you are fail. So that is uh, how we apply this function. Now press enter. And as you can see that the marks are 63, which are obviously greater than 60. So the student is passed. Now we can drag this to entire range and we'll see the result. Right now we have another scenario in which we have to assign grade to students based upon the given criteria. This is the criteria, right? So over here, as we have more than one condition to check, as we have more than one criteria, so we shall use nested if. Nested if means that one if inside another if. So first of all, look at the grading system. If the marks of the student are less than or equal to 60, then the student is fail. You get an F, right? Then if the marks are in the range of 61 to 70, you get a D. If the marks are in the range of 71 to 80, you get a C. If the marks are in the range of 81 to 90, you get a B. And if the marks are in the range of 91 to 100, you get an A. So now let me show you how we can apply this using the if statement. First of all, go to cell K8 in which you are going to apply this formula is equal to if now, what is the logical test? The first logical test. First of all, we will be applying check for grade A, right? So 
the marks present in cell i8 will be checked so if the marks present in cell i8 are greater than or equal to 91 what happens you get grade a that's simple right students you if you uh, want to focus on the formula so the formula is present in the formula bar right you can focus in on the formula bar if there is any visibility problem in the cell k8 okay so now if the marks are greater than or equal to 91 you get an a so if we have put the condition marks greater than or equal to 91 and value if true so if the value is true it means if the marks are actually greater than or equal to 91 you get an a but what if the marks are not greater than or equal to 91 now we am i'm talking about the second possible possibility that is basically the third parameter which asks you what if the value what about the value if the condition is false so if the condition is false now we have to check another condition that okay the marks are not greater than or equal to 91 but the marks may be in the range of 81 to 90 so if the first condition is true you get an a if the condition is false you have to check another criteria and that is where nested if comes into place as i told you nested if means using one if another uh, inside another if so now i am going to use another if statement if Logical test if marks are greater than or equal to 81. If this is the case, so you get a B. And if this is not the case, now again you are going to check for another criteria. So another if statement. If marks are greater than or equal to 71. If this is the case, so value if true you get a b in fact you get a c otherwise you need to check another criteria and that is if marks present in i8 is greater than or equal to 61 you get a D otherwise now as we are left with only one option and if your marks are not greater than 91 or, uh, or not greater than or equal to 91 similarly if they are not greater than or equal to 81 similarly if they are not greater than and equal to 71 and also if they are not e greater than or equal to 61 it means you have got less than 60 uh, less than 61 marks so you are failed so otherwise you are failed so even if none of the condition is true so you get an F now close all the bracket this is first bracket closed second bracket closed third bracket closed and fourth bracket closed now press enter now you see that as your marks are 63 so you have got a D right now let me drag it here it is the student who has got 63 marks he has been given grade T that's according to the criteria given in the grading system the students with 35 marks is failed the students with 98 marks has been assigned grade a and the students with 57 marks is assigned grade f if you want to revisit the formula you click on the cell and focus in on the formula bar and you get the entire formula that has been applied on the cell here it is this is the formula that has been applied and you can reapply it while you are doing practice Welcome students to the next video tutorial of this short course of Microsoft Excel. In this short video, we will be talking about how we can create charts in MS Excel. Microsoft Excel is a very useful data management tool used widely by almost every organization today to analyze and interpret data. A graph in Excel is a design tool that helps us visualize data. Excel has a variety of graphs and charts that can be used to represent data in different ways. In simple terms, a graph is a visual element that represents data in a worksheet. You will be able to analyze the data more efficiently by looking at a graph in Excel rather than numbers in a data sheet. Excel covers a wide range of graphs that you can use to represent your data and we will be talking about them in this short video. 
first of all let me show you how you can access the different elements related to graph in Microsoft Excel so you will have to go to the insert tab and in the insert tab you will find a chart group in the ribbon you have a variety of charts well, I'll show you how you can create some basic charts although it's a very complex topic and there are hundreds of different elements related to charts but as this is a basic introductory level course so we will be only focusing on some basic charts and I'll show you how you can create different charts from your basic data so for example let's first talk about the pie chart I've already created a small data set that is uh, that consists of five different items and their corresponding sale as you can see on your screen so first of all let's talk about the pie chart the pie chart is nothing but a circular graph representing data in the form of a pie or circle data basically is divided into different sections each one representing a proportion of the whole each pie of the pie chart actually represents a proportion of the whole right so for example we have this data right now we have different items and their corresponding sale what I can do I can select this data and then I can go to the insert tab and then select pie chart from the charts group in the ribbon click on pie you'll have option to select between 2d pie and 3d pie so let me select 2d pie first or we can directly go to 3d pie let's select 3d pie so here you can see as there were five different items so each item is presented by a different color in this pie chart there are different slices in the pie and each slice is presenting one of the items now whenever you create a chart you will see that three different dynamic tabs appear that are related to charts one is the design tab one is the layout tab and the other one is the format tab and as I told you that there are hundreds of elements related with charts so there are a few basic things in the design tab that is related to the chart that you have created first of all you have different styles for the chart you can select any style for example let me select this one then the most important thing is the chart layout here in under this design tab in the ribbon you have different layouts for example let me show you some different layouts of the pie chart this is this is one of the layout you can select this layout or this one or this one and you have multiple layouts you have to select your layout according to your requirement then there are other options you can right click on the plot area and you have 3d rotation in this pop-up menu you can select 3d rotation the dialog box gets open which have different options for filling the pie chart for the border colors border style shadow 3d formatting and 3d rotation from this 3d rotation you can adjust your x-axis and y-axis rotation for example let me show you how you can do that you can see that I am adjusting my x-axis rotation similarly you can adjust your y-axis rotation as per your requirement so that's how you can create a pie chart we have other type of charts as well the different chart type of charts that Excel provides you can be seen in the insert and then in the chart group in under the insert tab you can see them in the chart group now let me create bar chart or golem chart a bar graph or a bar chart shows information about two or more groups bar graph are mainly used to make comparison across a range let for example if I select the same data let me first delete this chart one more thing whenever you create a chart so that chart is normally by default shown to you on the same sheet in which your data is present what you can do you can from the design tab you can move this chart to a new sheet for example you can see that click on the design tab right at the end you have a move chart option click on that and you can select the sheet you can name it and press ok and you will see that the chart would be uh, presented on a separate sheet right so go back to your original data this is chart one now I select this data again and I go to the insert tab and this time I select the bar chart right we have the column chart column chart actually presents the bar in a vertical way and the bar chart represents the bar in a horizontal way right so let me select the column chart for example let me select this one 
So you can see in the x-axis you get all those five items A, B, C, D, E and then you have bars uh, against each item and the bar of an item represents its corresponding sale. Similarly, you can have multi-bar chart. For example, look at this data. You have the same five items and you have sale of shop 1 and sale of shop 2. So what you can do, you can select this entire data, come to the insert tab then select column chart and Excel will by default identify that this would require multiple bars right so select any type of bar a column chart as per your requirement I'm going to select the same 3d column chart so here it is you can see that blue bars are representing the sale of shop 1 and maroon bars are representing the sale of shop 2 right then one more thing that is very important that if you have this type of data in which your first column is also a numeric column now when you create a bar chart or a column chart in similar way that we did in the previous sheet or in the previous data so you'll see there is a problem let me show you how you can manage that problem first of all let me create a graph using this data so here it is I selected this data insert column chart and here it is you can see this is not not the chart that you were expecting because it is basically considering the air as a numeric column which actually it is a numeric column and it is presenting the ears using bars so basically ears were supposed to be present on the x-axis as the labels of the bars right so what you need to do you need to make some changes into this graph how you can do that in the design tab you have a data group called data so over here you have a select data so click on select data this dialog box would appear now you can see that the legend entries contain two entries one for air and one for sale air has its own bars and sale has its own bar this portion of the graph is called the legend area right so first of all you need to do you need to remove the ear from the legend entries so select ear and then click on the remove button so ears would be removed from the legend area and now you have to come to the horizontal axis label uh, so click on edit button and then you have to select these ears as the x-axis labels so you click on the ok button and then press the ok again and you will see that the graph is presented in a correct way now the ears are now shown in the x-axis as you can see and the corresponding bars are being correctly shown right so you may use other graphs as well for example let me show you how you can create line graph so let's go to the basic data in chart one so let me drag it to the right side I select this data again come to insert tab then you select line and you can select any one of them as per your requirement so let me select this 2d line so you can see that the line chart is presenting the actual data set in a way that x-axis contains all the labels and the lines is basically connecting the corresponding sale right you may have different layouts for that remember that whenever you create a graph there are different layouts that can be used so you have different layouts in the line chart as well for example you can see this layout or this one right or you may have this one this one seems very useful as well so it depends upon you it depends upon your requirement but I had to show you that there are different important options the first thing that whenever you create a chart you need to make sure that you have the appropriate data and then you have you can select different chart styles under the design tab you can select different chart layouts one more thing if for example you are not satisfied with a graph and you want to change that graph to another graph so you do not need to delete the entire graph you can directly do that under the design tab on the left hand side you have a change chart type option so just click on the chart and then click on change chart type so you can directly select any other type of chart for example this time I select a bar chart for this data so click on 
the bar and select the type of bar chart press ok and you see that the line chart has been directly changed to the bar chart right so that's how you can create a different charts remember that whenever you create a chart you can always change the chart title x-axis title y-axis title uh, you need to go through different uh, facilities related to chart that are present in the format tab and in the layout tab you need to explore them and then you will realize that excel provides you with hundreds of different options that you can uh, that can be related to the uh, formatting of the chart designing and layout setting of the chart right welcome dear students to our next topic in this short video we are going to talk about pivot tables pivot table are a very important feature of Microsoft Excel a pivot table is an interactive way to quickly summarize large amount of data you can use a pivot table to analyze numerical data in detail and answer unanticipated questions about your data a pivot table may be used to carry large amount of data in a very user-friendly way it can also be used for subtotaling and aggregating numeric data, summarizing data by categories and subcategories and creating custom calculations or formulas. It can expand or collapse level of data to focus on your result and drilling down to details from the summary data for areas of interest to you. Moving rows to columns or column to rows is also possible and very easy in while using your pivot data. Filtering, sorting, grouping, and conditionally formatting the most useful and interesting subset of data, enabling you to focus on just the information you want. It presents concise, attractive reports for you to analyze your expected result. Now, in order to understand pivot table, I've got a sample data set that is present on your screen. It has multiple fields. As you can see, it has order date, region, representative item units unit cost and total so it's basically sales related data now we have some queries on the right side of your screen focus on those queries first for example i uh, want you to show me region wise total sale i want you to show me representative wise total sale i want you to show me the total sale of each product in each row region Similarly, I want you to show me total sale of each representative in each region for each item. Then I want you to show me the total number of units sold for each product, I mean item. Uh, I want you to show me the total sale of pencil only, which is one of the items that are present in this sales data. And then I want you to show me the total sale done by John's, right? Now it's important to understand that these queries cannot be answered directly from this sales data. In order to answer these queries, you have to summarize your data according to different queries and different criteria. So what is the solution to that? The solution to that is to use pivot tables. Now, first of all, let me show you how you can create pivot tables. So first of all, you need to select your entire data. Here we go. I have a total of 43 records in this data so I selected all of them then you need to go to the insert tab and in the tables group you have a pivot table element click on that then click on pivot table it will first of all ask you about whether you want to create the pivot table on existing worksheets or do you want to create a new worksheet so i recommend you to create a new worksheet for pivot table which is by default the selected option and then press the ok button you can see that the pivot table and its related elements have appeared on a new sheet right now the name of this sheet is sheet 16. the first thing to understand and to note is that on the right side of your screen you get different pivot table related fields on top you have different fields that were picked from your original data if you remember order date region representative item units unit cost and total and then 
you get different areas you have a report filter you have column label you have row label and you have values so first of all you need to understand how to use these four areas and if you clearly can differentiate between the use of these four different areas you will be able to understand the pivot tables very easily so let's go one by one and answer all our queries and in that way you will be able to learn how we can use these different pivot table areas our first question was to show the region wise total sale what we need to do we need to pick the region click your left mouse button and drag it to row labels and you will see that now you are getting each region in a different row in pivot table then you wanted the total sale of each region so click on total because our total sale was present in this total field which was the last field of our original data so click on total and bring it over here to values and now focus on the left side of your screen in the pivot table you have got the answer of your query you are getting the region wise sale the total sale in central was 11139 the total sale in east was 6002 the total sale in west was 2486 similarly let's move to our next question our next question was show me representative wise total sale so this time you do not want area or region wise sale you want representative wise sale so we need to take it back now this time you are going to pick representative and bring it in rows and you are now getting the representative wise sale you can also present these representative as columns so if you do that so click on representative and drag it to the column labels you will see that the appearance of pivot table has completely changed so that's why I recommended you to use a representative in row labels because it is more meaningful now but it's completely up to you and the presentation that you want now let's go on to our next query show me total sale of each product in each region now there are two criteria now I want the total sale of each product in each region now how can I do that take this representative back to the fields portion now first thing is I want to filter that data region wise so click on region and bring it over here to row labels and the second filter was the product or the items so the items are present over here pick these items and it's up to you if you want to take them as column so just drag them to column and you will see you are getting the total sale of each item in every region right you can also drag them as rows so, so it's up to you basically that is the answer to our query we are getting the total sale of each item or product in each region now next question show me the total sales of each representative in each region for each item now we have three different criteria each representative each region and each item right so how can we do that okay so first of all pick your representatives and drag them to row labels here we go we have got all the representatives now the second criteria is region I recommend you to drag your region to column labels here we go and now the third criteria is to apply product wise filtration or item wise filtration so drag your item to row labels now here you see you are getting the total sale of each representative in each region for each item you can change its representation you can bring the region in the row label you can see now this representation seems more meaningful so you have got answer to your next query 
Now let's move on to the next query that is show me total number of units sold for each product. Okay. Only one filter. So we need to drag them back to the field area. Now the first thing as the criteria is item. So let me click on item and drag them to row labels. Now right now you are getting the total sale for each product but the query was that we want to show the total number of units sold for each product right so this time i want do not want the total sale so i need to take it back and now i'm going to pick units and drag them to values so here is the answer to your query you can see that for each item it's corresponding sum of sold units is given for example a total of 278 pens were sold so this is the answer to your query now let's move forward to our next query the next query is to show me the total sale of pencil only now we are not going to deal with the entire field rather than we are going to pick a particular value from a given field so right now that value is pencil and that is present in the item field so we want the total sale of pencil only right uh, what we are going to do so first of all drag all the filters back to the uh, their field area now I want the total sale so drag this total sale over here the total sale of all the item is 19,627 but as the query demands me to filter out my data for pencil only so you have a report filter area over here what you are going to do you are going to pick your item field and drag to the report filter now you see or focus on the cell and the area in which cell A1 and B1 is present. It has basically given you a filter and by default it has selected all the items. You can click on the drop down list and select only pencil and you'll see that you are getting the total sale of the pencil which is 2135. So in this way you can apply filter and you can filter out your data for a particular value present in a particular field right now let's move forward to next question show me the total sale done by John's only now this time again this is a filter based or it, it is a query that requires you to filter your data for John only so this time we do not want the uh, filtration on the basis of items rather than we want to do filtration on the basis of representative so pick representative over here and drag it to the report filter and now you can select your representative for example it asked for the total sale done by John's so select John's and you will see the total sale done by John is that much right now you can apply further criteria on it for example I want total sale of John in each region so pick region and drag that to row label and you can see that uh, the John has done sale only in East area similarly if you pick any other one for example Morgan so Morgan has done sale in central area Howard Howard has done sale in East Gill has done sale in central similarly Andrews has done sale in central so I'm looking for a representative that has done sale in more than one region in West Smith in central okay so it looks like that each representative belongs to only one region so that is why they have done sales in only one region so let's take or drag region back to the original field area and let's pick items and break them to row labels so now you can see the sale done by Kivil for different items is presented similarly John's so John has sold basically four items and the total sale of each item is presented and filtered for John one more thing that I would like to tell you that you may not always want the sum of total rather you may want like for example the average of sale or minimum sale or maximum sale depending upon the nature of your data set so uh, what you can do you can come to this value section and click on this sum of total then click on the value field setting and you can see by default it is 
applying the sum operation so you have other operations like count average maximum minimum product so for example i want the average sale i don't want the total sale i want the average sale so you click on the average and press ok button and you will see that now you are getting the average sale for each item for the selected representative so in this way you can play with the pivot tables it has hundred of uh, different options available to you uh, i have shown you the basics now you need to further explore these items Thank you. Welcome dear students to the next video of this short course for Microsoft Excel. In this short video, I am going to show you some important date related function. Remember that Excel is intelligent enough to identify dates and to manage dates, right? So I have few functions to discuss today. Uh, let us first start from the simple and basic functions. So uh, we have a today function and then we have a now function. Let me show you the difference between today and now function. So let me use first today function. So is equal to today. It does not have any parameter. So you can simply press enter or close the round bracket and then press enter without using or without giving it any parameter. So just press enter and you can see that today's date has been displayed in the format month followed by date followed by the year, right? Then we have the now function. So let me use the now function now and you would be able, uh, hopefully you would be able to see the difference. Remember that uh, the now function does not have any uh, parameter as well. So you just need to use this function without any parameter and you can see just uh, increase the width. So here it is. I hope the difference is clear now that today function only returns the today's date and now function returns the date as well as the time, right? And this date and time is based upon your system's date and time. Then we have the date function uh, that has three parameters. Obviously the first of all year, year for example, I enter 1989-1989 as year, 9 as month and 12 as day right and press enter so this is the formula that is used to enter any date into your system right uh, then uh, before going to date plus day and date minus day let me show you a few additional formulas okay so in order to obtain the day or in order to obtain the year we have formulas day select the date from which you want to extract the day so for example I select this date so you can see that the day let me first change its here it is to a number here it is so uh, I have changed the format of the cell so you can say that the day function has extracted the day from the given date similarly if you want to extract the year so y e a r year and just give it the day and press enter so again you would have to change it to number and you have to adjust the decimal points okay so you can see that year has been extracted from the given date right similarly uh, if you want to add or subtract any number of days so that's very simple in ms excel this can just be done like adding or subtracting number from other number right so for example if i want to add five days to the date given over here in cell b6 so i can simply do that uh, is equal to this cell plus 5 and you will see it returns me 17 September 1989 so 5 days have been added right similarly if you want to subtract any number of days from a given cell so you can do it in the similar way is equal to select this date and uh, let's suppose minus uh, 30 days so you get the date 13th August 1989 so any number of days or um, yes any number of days can be added or subtracted just like 
adding any number or subtracting any number from any other number right then you have another uh, important function for adding or subtracting months and that is the e date function right e date function e date function is used to add or subtract any number of months from a given date so for example uh, let me use this function e date e date uh, it has two parameters the start date so let me select the start date as today's date which is present in cell b4 uh, comma and months so you have to get how many months do you want to add so as I want to add for example two months so select two press enter and uh, if you get this type of thing in return so this is basically not a date this is a number so you have to come to the home tab and in the number group you have to adjust the type of value that is present in the cell so make it short date and you can see that you are getting 28 October 2023 so two months have been added to today's date right similarly if you want to subtract any uh, number of month from the given date so you can again you use e date function how is equal to e date select the date for example I select today's date and I want to subtract five months so I, I want to subtract five months so I'll press minus five and press enter so again this is a number I have to change the type of uh, value in the cell so select uh, short date so you can see that five months have been subtracted from today's date right so the function that is used for adding or subtracting any number of months is the e date function right now uh, we can subtract uh, or add any number of years and for that same e date function would be used but the only difference is that we have to convert months to years right so let me do that for example if I want to add two years to the today's date so e date this is the start date and now as I want to add two years so I have to convert two years to months so two year contains 24 months so let me write 24 over here and then press enter and I'm getting the number again so change the type of value in the cell make it short date here here you go 28th august 2025 two years have been added similarly e date function can be used to subtract any number of years so is equal to e date select the today's date comma uh, you want to subtract five years for example so convert these five years into one it gives you 60 so write minus 60 minus 60 press enter change the type of value that is present in the cell uh, here you go you're getting 28th august 2018 right so e date function can be used for adding or subtracting months as well as it can be used for adding and subtracting years as well right but remember that for adding or subtracting years you have to convert the years into months and then you use that in e date function now in order to calculate duration uh, between two dates uh, for example if someone wants to calculate the age so for that we have uh, two different uh, we need two different dates one is the start date so for example this one becomes our start date and this one becomes our end date so then we can calculate the duration in terms of years in terms of months or in terms of days between these two dates right so for that purpose we need to use date diff function date diff function you need to remember that okay it has three parameters the start date end date and then uh, in the third parameter you have to pass m y or d for month year or day respectively so let me use it uh, first of all let me calculate the duration in years then calculate the duration in months and then let me calculate the duration in days so let me show you how it is done so is equal to date diff the first parameter is the starting date so start date is present in cell b6 let me select this one the second parameter is the uh, end date so end date is let's suppose today's date so let me select the reference of cell b4 and then as I, I want to calculate the duration in years so I'll write Y 
and press enter so you can see that the it contains a total of 33 years so duration has been calculated in years similarly if you want to do it for months so date diff then the this is the start date this is the end date and this time you write m over here and so there are total of 407 months between start date and end date similarly you can do that for the days as well so is equal to date diff start date end date and write write d over here so there are 12403 days between these two start and end dates right so you can calculate the duration in terms of total years months and days so for example just like we calculate the age as 33 years 4 months 3 days so you can convert the months into years and days into months uh, how we can do that let me show you that as well so for example let me first copy this so the age calculation will be same let me paste it over here or let me rewrite the formula so start date comma end date and then years so 33 years now months so is equal to date diff start date comma end date and now as you want to convert the months into years and only show the remaining months that cannot be converted into years so you have to write over here y in inverted quotes remember y m and now 33 months 11 years and now let's calculate the days in similar fashion date diff start date end date now as you want to convert the total days into months and only show the remaining days that cannot be converted into months so let me write y d right y d and then so uh, no not y d it should be m d because we want to convert the days into months m d so the if let's suppose if someone date of birth is 12 september 1989 and if, if today you want to calculate the exact age so it is 33 years 11 months and 16 days so these are some important basic functions relating to ms excel Let's move forward into the next video then. Welcome dear students to the next lesson of this short introductory course of Microsoft Excel in which I'll teach you that how you can consolidate your data from multiple sheets into one single sheet. Remember that there are two basic ways to do consolidation in Microsoft Excel. One is the manual way of doing consolidation and the other one is by using the consolidation feature provided by Microsoft Excel. Now in order to explain both, I have got a scenario. For example, I have three shops, shop 1, shop 2, shop 3. So in each sheet, I have got three different items and their corresponding sale in 2020, 2021 and 2022. And then I have got a target sheet by the name of consolidate one in which I want the consolidated report in such a way that for each item and for each year I want their total sale for all the shops. Now the first thing that you need to understand and to note is that I've got the data in the same area in the same range in every single sheet. For example in shop one I have my data present in a 3 2 D 6 similarly in shop 2 the data is present in the same range and similarly in shop 3 the data is present in the same range and in the target sheet which I am consolidating the data in the same range so when you are doing 
manual consolidation it is a mandatory thing that you need to have same range in all the source sheets and the target sheet now what i need to do as this is the cell in which i want the sum of sale of item one for every shop for 2020 so how i'm going to do that i'm going to use the sum function for it so equal symbol sum sum now the problem is that the data which i want to add now or on which i want to apply the sum function is present in different sheets so what you need to do click on shop one and select this b4 cell now without moving to shop two or shop three what you need to do just press the shift button and without releasing the shift button click on the tab of shop two and shop three what it will do it will select the before cell of shop two as well as before cell of shop three and when you press enter you will see that you get the answer in the consolidated report let me do this once more so that it is clear to you how you are going to do that press equal sign and then the function that you want to apply sum now basically you, what you want is that you want this sum operation to be applied on the data present in cell b5 of shop 1 plus data present in cell b5 of shop 2 plus data present in cell b5 of shop 3 so what you need to do click on shop 1 and click on cell b5 and if you want to select the same cell in shop 2 and shop 3 so press the shift button and click on shop 2 and shop 3 and then press enter so you'll get the corresponding sum in the consolidated sheet just drag this to the entire range and you will get the corresponding values over here here is the scenario in which the data in the source sheet are present in completely different ranges for example in shop 1 you can see the data is present in this range in shop 2 the data is present in a completely different range and in shop 3 the data is present in a completely different range now i go to the sheet the target sheet that is consolidated 2 now if you want to obtain the consolidated report now so manual way of doing it cannot be effective now so what you need to do you need to do the or you need to use the consolidation feature of Microsoft Excel. So let me show you how you can do that. Go to the data tab and in the data tools group, you need to click on the consolidate. When you click on the consolidate, you now have to make the references of those data ranges, right? First of all, you want, you should select the function that you want to apply. So I want to apply the sum function. So it is by default selected. Then you need to add the first reference. So click on the reference tab, go to shop one and select this entire data and then add this to the reference list. Now go to shop two and uh, select this entire data and then add it. Now it has been added to the reference list and now go to shop three and here we have the data select it and press the add button now all the three references are selected now you need to tell excel that you have labels in top row and left column so click on top row and left column and do you want to create a link to source data it's up to you to decide if you click on this checkbox so if you make any changes in the source those changes would also be shown or incorporated in the consolidated report and if you do not check this dialog box so any changes made to the source would not affect the consolidated report right so right now i am not clicking this one and i'm pressing the ok button and you will see that the corresponding consolidated report has been shown in consolidate 2 sheet right so if you have the data of the source file and the consolidated report the target report uh, if you have same ranges so you may use the uh, manual consolidation but if the data in the source uh, sheets are present in different ranges so then you need to do the consolidation or you need to use the consolidation uh, feature of microsoft excel thank you Welcome dear students to this next video of this short introductory course of Microsoft Excel. In this short video I will show you some advanced use of Excel formulas. 
The objective over here is to show you that Excel is not only meant for simple addition, subtraction and other basic number manipulation, rather than it can be used for complex analysis of data and different advanced data validation can be applied on it to maintain the integrity of data. In the first part of this video, I have got a data set of assets. As you can see, we have three fields, class, city and cost. And I have to answer the question given on the right hand side. I have got a few similar queries and from each group of similar queries I will solve only one and rest it's up to the students to solve them and practice them right so uh, the first query that we have is to calculate the total cost of buildings now this is not a simple sum it is a criteria based sum that because we need only to add the cost of building building is basically one of the category in the class field there are a few records that belong to building for example, you can see record present at record number 48 and row number 49. So this is a criteria based sum. So I have already mentioned at the start of the course that whenever we want to obtain criteria based sum, we need some if function. So let's apply it S U M sum if first of all, it has three parameters. So first of all, it asks me to enter or to give it the complete range so here we go we have this complete range so let's select the entire data it's selected now the second parameter is the criteria our criteria is basically the building you can write buildings over here directly in inverted quotes or you can just refer to it so building is present in cell a49 so I refer to that the cell reference is present a 49 and now the sum range so the sum range is given in this last field so let's select this sum range now as all the parameters are completed let me close the function and here we go I've got the sum 23982 the total cost of vehicle and the total cost of equipment can be calculated in the same way now i come to this query it asks me to sum the costs that are greater than 5000 so i will have to sum all those costs in which the total cost is greater than 5000 so again it is a, a criteria based sum so is equal to sum if the range so here we have the range this is the range comma criteria now criteria shall be written in inverted quotes so criteria is greater than 5000 right so this is the second parameter and to so simply close this function so here we go we have obtained the sum of all those costs which are greater than 5000 now the next query calculate the total cost of computers in Peshawar. So again this is criteria based sum but right now we have two criteria, or we can say we have more than one criteria. The first criteria is applied on the class we have to select computers from the class field and then we have to select Peshawar from city field. So whenever we have more than one criteria so the function that is going to be used is sum if s right. For simple sum, we use the sum function. For criteria based sum, we use the sum if function. And for multiple criteria based sum, we use sum if s function. So, how do we do that? Is equal to sum if s. Okay, so first of all, give it the sum range. This is the sum range comma criteria range one so first criteria is applied on this range the class comma and what is the criteria we have to select computers here we go the reference is made computers now second criteria as the second criteria is applied on cities so select the second criteria range first comma and what is the criteria it's Peshawar so here I gave it the reference of Peshawar right 
now as both the criteria are complete so press enter here we go this is the total cost of computers in Peshawar similarly you need to calculate the total cost of tools in Peshawar now let's come to the next query count the number of equipments in Peshawar with cost greater than 5000 now we have multiple criteria over here but this time we are going to use the count if s function right we have three different versions of the count function simple count function for simple counting then count if function for criteria based counting and when we have multiple criteria based counting so we will use the count if s function so let me show you how we do that is equal to count if s so criteria range one so the first criteria is applied on the class because we have to select the equipment so give it the complete range is the range then the criteria is equipment so select equipment then criteria range two that is on cities so select this entire range and now the criteria city needs to be Peshawar so select Peshawar and then we have oh, the third criteria is cost so select this entire range and now what is the criteria the criteria is shall be written in inverted codes greater than 5000 now press enter and here we go we have six total equipments in Peshawar with cost greater than 5000 right similarly count the number of vehicles in Karachi with cost greater than 6000 and cost less than 9000 so let me show you how we do that is equal to count if s so the first criteria is applied on the class and we have to select vehicles so this is the complete range for criteria and the criteria is vehicles so let's see where we can find vehicles here we go okay and then uh, the second criteria needs to be applied on the city so select the city range and select the city Karachi okay and the third criteria is to be applied on cost so select this entire cost range and then place the criteria greater than 6000 and the last criteria is again needed to be applied on cost so select cost this is your criteria range and the criteria less than 9000 press enter so you have got only one record of vehicles in Karachi with cost greater than 6000 cost less than 9000 then uh, some the cost for tools in Islamabad having cost greater than 2000 okay let me do this now is equal to sum if s you need to use sum if s function okay not sum if sum if s as it is a multiple criteria based submission so sum if s so sum range this is our sum range comma criteria range one so first criteria is needed to be applied on class and we have to select tools so give it the criteria range then select tools this is our criteria then criteria range 2 that has to be applied on cities so give it criteria range then select Islamabad this is our criteria and then the third criteria that is cost greater than 2000 so select this cost and then write the criteria greater than 2000 press enter so this is the sum of cost for tools in Islamabad having cost greater than 2000 right so in this way you can solve the next query
Thank you. In this short video, I will show you how you can apply advanced Excel validation to maintain the integrity of our data. We have some sheets already made. We have sheet names and the corresponding instruction that what needs to be done on this sheet. So first of all, we have a sheet named simple and we have to simply apply a validation in cell B2 such that the GPA should be between 1 and 4. So this is easy. Go to simple tab in b2 you have to apply the data validation so go to the data tab click on data validation this dialog box would appear it has already been discussed in the previous videos click on setting then from this drop down list click on decimal and write one in minimum you need to select the between criteria and minimum number is one and maximum number is four press on ok now you can see the validation has been applied and uh, if you write 2, it allows. If you write 2.5, it allows. But anything less than 1 or greater than 4 would not be allowed. Here you can see it's not allowed. So the correct validation has been applied. Right. Now we have the next sheet date. And we have to do data validation in B2 such that the registration date should be between today's and 30 days from today. So it's simple. You need to go to the data sheet. You have to apply the data validation in cell B2. So go to data, then click on data validation from this list, select date. And as the criteria is that the date that is allowed should be between today and 30 days from today. So select the between criteria. And in the start date, uh, we have to capture the today's date. So for that, we have today function today and the end date is 30 days from today so i told you earlier that you can simply add any number of days to a, uh, to a given date using the plus operator so is equal to today plus 30 so the minimum date or the starting date is today and the end date is today plus 30 so let me show you now press ok now enter the today's date which is i guess 30 August so month followed by day followed by so here we go the today's date is accepted enter the yesterday's day 8 29 30 2023 you can see it does not allow this date because the criteria was that the date should be between today and 30 days from today so let me write 28 September this should be allowed but if I write 29 September it is allowed or about 30 here we go you can see that it allows a maximum date till 29 September right so in this way you can apply or you can add any number of days as the end date of the of the criteria that is to be applied on a given cell right remember that the default format used here is month followed by year uh, month followed by days followed by year right then we have the next instruction we have the next sheet day 2 and we have to do data validation in b2 such that the registration date should be any date except for thursday and saturday so now this is a complex one and we will have to use the weekday function for it Weekday function is used to extract the weekday from the given date. First of all, let me show you how we can use the weekday function. So come to the date 2 sheet. We Let me enter the today's date. Okay, if I want to obtain the weekday, so I will have to use the function weekday. Weekday, give it this date, comma and then select the return type so select two over here okay so when you use two over here it we have actually different weekday system so when we write two so it basically considers our current system in which monday is considered the first day and 
the sunday is considered the seventh or last day of the week so you have to write two over here so it obtains the weekday as three right so we have to do validation in b2 such that the registration date should be any date except for thursday and sunday it means that it should not allow the date if the corresponding day is thursday and saturday right so let me show you how we can do that go to date two come to the cell b2 go to the data tab then data validation then come to custom and write the formula over here let me show you how we can do this first of all let me make make the formula over here so that you may note it down so weekday of the date present in b2 second parameters 2 should not be should not be so not is written as an angular brackets should not be 4 and then weekday present in from the date present in cell b2 with second parameter 2 should not be 6 as now we have two conditions so we need to enclose it in and I hope you remember that and will only return true if both the conditions are true so let me copy this now let's go there it's equal to let's hope it works press ok now let me enter today's date uh, 8 30 it allows but let me enter tomorrow's date tomorrow is Thursday so it is not allowing me so let me enter the day after tomorrow's date so that is 1st September it's Friday it allows it but if I enter the Saturday's date that is 2nd September so it is not allowing right so this is the formula right you can note it down and this formula says that the weekday from the date present in cell B2 with system 2 as selected as the system for the weekdays should not be 4 it means should not be Thursday and it should not be 6 either which means it should not be Saturday and we have enclosed it in AND operator because we want to make sure that both conditions are satisfied only then a value can be allowed right now let's move towards the next instruction the next instruction is that do data validation such that the semester expenses should be should not be more than thousand uh, in fact ten thousand that is to be done in the budget sheet over here okay so how do we do that uh, we need to make sure that while doing our entries or some of all the entries should not be more than ten thousand so select this cell and go to data tab data validation now as this is a special type of validation so you have to uh, ensure that you place the right formula and in order to place the formula as a criteria for validation you need to select custom from this drop down list let's focus on the formula is equal to sum of this range you have to freeze this range remember i've already explained the concept of freezing you press f4 the uh, the range has been freezed the sum of this range should always be less than or equal to 10,000. Now let's see how it works. So write 3,000 over here. Then for example, uh, you have entered the semester expenses as 3,000, food as 4,000. Now the total is 7,000. Now if I enter any value in such a way that the sum becomes greater than 10,000 so it would not allow this value for example let me enter 4,000 now you see it is not allowing me that because the total sum is now greater than 10,000 so I can enter a maximum of 3,000 over here now it would not allow me to enter any value over here because we have already reached our maximum value so let me enter 1 and it is not allowing me it cannot allow me any value except 0 right let me show you again for example, if I write 10,000 over here in semester expenses, it is not going to allow me any value greater than 0 in the other cells or in the range because the 10,000 has already been reached as the total sum. So write 1,000 over here. 
it will not allow you so in this range only those values can be allowed whose sum is a maximum 10,000 right now let's go to the next instruction the next instruction says that you have to go to the invoice number sheet and you do data validation from A3 to A17 such that no number is repeated so come to the invoice number and this is the range in which we have to make sure that no value is repeated now how do I do that so from data tab click on data validation from this drop down list click on custom and now focus on the formula we need to make sure that the count of any entry is not greater than one so count if select this entire range and freeze it now first of all you will compare these entries with cell a3 and then cell o4 a4 a5 a6 and so on so we have freezed the range but we will not freeze the second entry in which through which the match would be done so select on this cell okay and now the count is should be equal to one this is the formula remember uh, this complete ray every entry of this range would be compared with this cell right now it's a3 but when we drag this count to the entire range so it means it would the reference would automatically get updated and the complete range would be compared with each cell a3 a4 up to a17 so click on ok and you'll see now uh, 2 allowed 3 allowed but if I want to enter 2 again it won't allow because this value is already present in this range so 5 7 if I write 7 again this would not allow because the value is already present in this range right okay so let's move to the next okay so the next criteria says that you have to apply the product code in such a way that the format of the product code should be d01 to d99 here we go so now let me show you how do we do that uh, we have multiple criteria over here I have already written this formula so let me show you you can see the first criteria that we have that the length of cell b2 shall be 3 the second criteria that we have is the left of b2 shall be d you are not allowed to enter any other character and then the third formula that we have is that the right of p2 we have to pick the rightmost two values and then we have to convert it into value and then we make sure that it is a number right because i hope you remember that allowed range is d01 to d99 so you can see the left must be d the total size of this text shall be 3 and the value at the right most two characters should be a number so uh, let me copy this let me copy this formula and go to excel data validation select custom and then paste the formula here and press ok so you'll see it will only allow let's suppose I enter D98 it allows what if I enter C98 it shall not allow because the leftmost character is not D similarly what if I enter 7989 so it shall not allow because the total size is not three characters and what if I enter D D two so it shall not allow because the rightmost two characters are not number right let's go to the okay let me first enter the correct value okay now let's go to the last one we have to create drop down a list of fruits and vegetable if i select food a list of five foods shall appear and if i select vegetable list of five vegetables should appear so basically we have to create a dependent drop down list now let me show you how we can create a dependent drop down list so and let's move now to the drop down list okay first of all try to understand what is required first of all we need to create a drop down list over here that allows you to select among vegetable and fruits right so how do I do that it's very simple data data validation then list and in the source you need to give these two values click on ok and now 
here you go you have two choices now now what's the demand that if you select which table from the main list so you must have a choice among potato tomato and ladyfinger or if you select fruit from the first list you must have a choice between apple mango and banana so basically i require another drop down list over here but that would not be a simple round drop down list rather it would be a dependent drop down list whose values are dependent on the choice done in cell b3 right so first of all i have to create the named ranges this is very important to understand select this range uh, i have to make sure that excel knows that potato tomato and lady finger are basically vegetables so go to the formulas and then in the name manager in the defined name group you click on create from selection the top row over here is the name of this range that is vegetable so click on ok and you can confirm it if you now select this range so you will see that in the name box it says vegetable and then again now name this second range so select this range create from selection the top row is the name over here so fruits right now over here as you want a list so go to the data tab data validation select list and in the source you have to write a formula indirect indirect it means that this list is going to be de uh, dependent indirectly on this value right this value and now close this formula and press enter you will see another list has appeared and as fruit is selected in the main drop down list so the second list shows me apple mango and banana now if i select vegetable and click on this drop down so you can see that it now gives me a list of vegetables so basically the second uh, is the second drop down list is dependent on the first drop down list so you use the formula indirect for creating the second drop down list so we have completed all the validation checks. Thank you. Now let's move forward dear students towards headers and footers and let me show you how you can insert header and footer into your Microsoft Excel worksheet. Remember that the header and footer facility is available in the insert tab when you click on the insert tab in its corresponding ribbon you will see that there is a text group and inside the text group you have multiple different elements and one of those elements is header and footer facility so you click on header and footer the first thing that you would realize is that both the header as well as the footer in microsoft excel is divided into three different sections it's up to you that how many sections you may use now another important thing to note over here is that when you click on the header when you insert the header and footer uh, an associated design tab appears now this design tab contains different headers and footer related elements the most important group over here is the header and footer elements which contain multiple elements like page number number of pages current date current time file path file name sheet name and picture now let me show you how you can use these elements in the header and footer. Click on the section of header in which you want to insert one of these elements. For example, I want to insert over here the page number and I want to insert it in a way that it shows me page one of total pages, right? So what I'm going to do, just go and click on page number. Here we go. And you can write off and then you click on number of pages now what happens is that when you click on the sheet you will see it says 1 of 11 go down it says 2 of 11 now 3 of 11 4 of 11 so you have inserted the number of pages as well as the current page number now you can insert for example you want to insert a logo so you can click on the third section of the header and go to the design tab and from header and footer elements click on picture you can select any picture for example right now i click on this picture and press insert now if you want to format this picture so you have this active element format picture click on it and adjust its height width and then press ok now click on the sheet you will see that the picture has appeared on right top of the page right over here by page i mean the excel sheet now you can come to the footer you can see that we have three different section in the footer as well 
so for example in the first section I write my own name in the second section for example I want to insert the current date so I can directly insert it from the header and footer element so just click on the date and in the third section I may want to click on the file path from header and footer elements and now when you click on the sheet so you will see that the file path has appeared as a third element of footer so now you have headers and footers right whenever you click on the header and footer the design tab would appear right and you have other options for example if you want different first page or you want different odd and even pages by different odd and even pages mean that different headers on odd pages as on even and on even pages right so that's how you can insert headers